Hi students, today we'll start lecture 22 and today I'm going to discuss finite wings and downwash. These are very important concepts as far as aerospace is concerned because as we know aircraft wings are essentially finite. They are not air file sections. So this is an important difference which we will discuss in today's lecture. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now if we look at a typical aircraft wing or it could even be a rotor blade or a wind turbine blade, you will see that the sections are something like this, which I have shown in the blue here. So these are the wing sections, which are typically airfoils. But when we assume only airfoil cross sections and derive the different equations for that, such as CL, CM, CD, and so on, all the coefficients, etc., then we are essentially assuming an infinite wing. That is, the wing goes from minus infinity to plus infinity so it goes on and on and we try to create this situation in a wind tunnel where we block both the ends but in reality that is not going to be possible so there is going to be flow from below the wing to the top surface so that's something we are going to see later now let's fix some nomenclature so we assume this wing here we assume there's a velocity from front given by v that's the air velocity then the wing span is given by B. So that's the notation we use to discuss the wing span. Now, as soon as we have defined the wing span, we are able to define what is known as the aspect ratio. So we use the symbol AR to define aspect ratio, and AR is B squared by S. So here you can clearly see B is the wing span. And the area of the wing is A, and therefore AR would be B squared by S. So, of course, the dimensions of both the top and bottom are meter square here. So, this is also a dimensionless quantity. Now, just to give you some idea about this number in terms of actual geometric shapes, let's look at, for example, a rectangle wing. So, this is the most simple cross section you can get, and here, of course, B would be the wing span and S is the area of the wing and this is going to be given by B into C where C is the chord. In the case of a rectangular wing, the chord is constant throughout the wing. So S is BC and if I substitute this in the definition of AR, I get B square by BC, B cancels out and I get B by C which is of course the typical aspect ratio as we define in Anything which we do, for example, if we are making figures for a document, then we talk of aspect ratio there and so on. And so that's the aspect ratio in terms of a rectangular cross section. Now we'll see that in many cases, an elliptical cross section is optimal for aircraft wing. And so what happens is that if we consider an elliptical cross section, the wing span would be B and the maximum chord length which is at the center would be C and therefore then I can write the area of this shape as pi BC by 4. This you can get from geometry and essentially again I substitute this in my equation here for aspect ratio and so I get 4B by pi C and the final shape which I am going to look at is the circular cross section and a circular cross section let's say b is c is d so essentially in this case the wing span is same as the chord and these are all given by the diameter of this circle which is d and if i make this substitution here i would get this is 4 by pi now it would seem that the circular wing is very theoretical but do remember that Many flight vehicles use rotors, for example, helicopters and drones. And in those cases, the wing can actually be considered to be a circular cross-section body. Now, we are going to use a different notation for infinite wing and finite wing in terms of the lift, drag, and pitching moment coefficient. So for the airfoil section, we will use small letter C, so small c, l, small c m, small c d, these are the lift, moment and drag coefficients for an airfoil or infinite wing. 
and for a finite wing we will use cl cm cd where c is given by capital letters so this will help us demarcate the difference between these two type of wing situations now let us look at what happens when you have a finite wing so if we go back to our airfoil pressure distribution we know that on the top surface there is a suction or there is a low pressure region and on the bottom surface there is a higher pressure region this you can see from the diagram of the pressure coefficient with respect to the cord which we have discussed before in one of our previous lectures so this is the airfoil section here so the cord is going from front to the back here and this is the pressure distribution on the upper surface cpu and the pressure distribution on the lower surface is cpl so what would happen in the complete wing is that because there is low pressure at the top and high pressure at the bottom some of the air is going to try to move from the lower surface to the higher surface and so this air as it moves up it essentially ends up creating what is known as a vortex which is a circular type of flow which is present at the wing tips and you can clearly see that this phenomena happens because the wing is finite if the wing went on and on and on then of course there would be no room for this kind of vortex to be created in the theoretical case of an infinite wing so what happens is that this circulatory motion it causes the vortex to trail downstream so this is what you see in the case of many airplanes if you look at them high up in the sky you are going to see these kind of vortices which are being shed and trailed downstream so in fact you can sometimes see these if you are sitting in an airplane and you have a window seat and you look outside then you may be able to see these kind of vortex trails in some situations if you are lucky so again you will you are going to get this kind of vortex trailed motion here and the net result of this vortex motion is that it's going to create a velocity so what happens is that the wing vortices cause a small downward velocity component and this downward velocity component i have given in this red arrow here and you can see that there is the forward velocity v there is the downward velocity caused by the vortices this is sometimes known as the downwash velocity also and the resultant velocity which i have given in this maroon color is given as the resultant of the v and the downwash and this angle is actually alpha i alpha subscript i and this is the induced angle of attack and of course remember that alpha is our usual angle of attack for a typical airfoil section so what would happen is that the resultant velocity seen by the airfoil section changes because it is now actually a finite wing situation so the airfoil section would have seen the velo the velocity given by v and the angle given by alpha but what happens is that now because of the presence of downwash w the resultant velocity is given by this purple line and so the angle actually reduces to alpha effective where alpha effective is alpha minus alpha i so this picture is very important you can clearly see this angle is alpha then from geometry we know this angle is alpha and then we clearly see that alpha effective is alpha minus alpha i because w is of course a downwash velocity acting downwards so what this downwash velocity is going to do is that it's going to reduce alpha and in turn it's going to cause a change in the lift and drag so the effective lift and drag which act on the finite wing changes and this happens because there is a backward tilt of lift caused by this downwash velocity and this leads to what is known as the induced drag so you can clearly see here that the effective lift and drag have changed because these are parallel and perpendicular to this resultant velocity here so this drag effective is parallel to the resultant velocity here the l effective is normal to the resultant velocity here 
and what I have shown here the blue lift and drag these are essentially normal and parallel to the actual velocity v so there has been this change in the lift and drag due to the presence of the finite wing so in summary what actually would happen with the finite wing and the infinite wing so let us assume if we have an infinite wing or an airfoil situation alpha was 6 degrees let's say the cl was 0.9 and cd is 0.008 then in a finite wing, the effective angle would go down from 6 degrees. So that's we have seen because of the presence of the downwash velocity. This would cause the CL to go down slightly from the 0.9 value. And it would cause the CD to go up from the previous 0.008 value. So we see that both these effects which are happening are somewhat negative. They are not something we want. We don't want to reduce lift we don't want to increase drag but it does happen because we have a finite wing and one of the things we can realize qualitatively here is that infinite wing would be more efficient and therefore we see that whenever we are designing aircraft for crews we tend to prefer long slender wings because they are going to lead to higher lift and lower drag later we are going to see the math behind all this thing but intuitively we can see that this is because the downwash is created and downwash is created because the wings happen to be finite. So there is always going to be this flow here. The vortex is going to be shed from the wing tip. And so there is going to be the downwash velocity. So to summarize today's lecture, we see that finite wings create trailed vortices which cause the downwash velocity and downwash reduces the effective angle which is seen by the wing and this in turn produces a tilt in the lift vector which leads to the creation of induced drag. So this is something important that induced drag is actually created by the presence of lift. So it's something like a price you have to pay to generate lift from a finite wing. Now long slender wings are used wherever cruise is required. So you see that most of the airplanes which want to have lower amount of drag and good amount of lift they tend to have long slender wings so whenever you are designing anything for cruise flight where money is important and so fuel consumption becomes important you tend to go for long slender wings also we saw that aspect ratio is important for induced drag we are going to see it mathematically in our next lecture but right now you can of course figure out that Aspect ratio is directly going to be related to this concept of long slender wings. So that's something which is very important. So that was my lecture for today where we got introduced to the concept of a finite wing. And we saw that the finite wing leads to this vortex being shed from the wing tips. And that in turn leads to the creation of downwash which changes the angle and which essentially changes the directionality of the lift leading to induced drag. So I'll end this lecture today. I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.